Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Kelly, and now we're going to look at 2024 AP Precalculus FRQ number three. It's this trig question. This lady rolling a tire. We're going to figure out some stuff. So the tire of a car has a radius of nine. Man, my brain is screaming already. So they're giving you some information. If the radius is nine, right, that's going to end up being the amplitude here. So you know, I want to, I want to read the whole problem, but I can't help myself. I'm like, oh my god, that's going to be a all right, I'm going to write A there. We're going to keep reading. A uh, person rolls a tire forward. So here's W, and we're going to roll it forward on level ground. Point W on the edge of the tire touches the ground at T equals one half second. So they have to give you some points in this problem, right? So here's one point that they give you. At one half, it's going to be at zero because it's zero feet above the ground. Okay. The tire completes a full rotation, and the next time it touches the ground is at five halves second. Who counts seconds and halves like that? But this is five halves second. It's going to be at zero again. Okay, guess what? Oh, man. I like to play a game I call halvesies. We're going to cut these in halves, and we should see it. But let's, let's draw it over here a little bit. We know that one minimum value is at one half. So I can draw that right here, maybe. This is a half comma zero. All right, and I know the next time it hits the ground is like over here, so that'll be five halves and then zero. And then we play my game called halvesies, right? So what's between one half and five halves? That would be three halves. Well, what's between the minimums? That would be the maximum. So right here, this point would be between one half and five halves. I'm gonna call that three halves. We just need to know like how far off the ground that is. So. Uh, the maximum height of W above the ground is 18 inches. What? I think I said feet before. That didn't make sense. But that's inches right there. So we're at zero and we go up to 18. What about the middle? What's in between zero and 18? That would be nine, right? So we can, well, I'll just put a nine right there. We know that these are at nine, these are at nine. So I'm gonna play halvesies again. This is one half and three halves. Between the middle of those two is two halves. Two halves is one. That's what K is going to be at, and it's going to be at 9, right, because it's between 18 and 0. And then G, look, we're going back a half, back a half. G would be back a half. This would be at 0, and again, it would be at 9. And if I go back a half, it would be at negative 1 half, and then it would be at the top, which is what, a maximum of 18. I think we have all of our points, don't we? So we've labeled all of our points. That helps us right there. Um, we did that. Great job. Next part of the question. The function can be written in the form h of t equals all this stuff. And you have to be careful. Sometimes they give you cosine. Sometimes they give you sine. I don't know what they're going to do this year, but the first year was sine. Hmm. All right. So we know that sine curves start at the midline, right? We learned that. Here's a basic sine curve. So our sine curve has to start you know, at the midline, we have to be in the middle. And I like it to start by going in a positive direction. Now, here's something you can say. I'm going to pause for a second. Students in my class did not like negatives. And they started with five halves right here. And then they went over another, how many we got here? Another four, so we found nine halves is where they found their next minimum. And they found a completely different set of points. That is fine. And you can get full credit for that. And so when we're going to write our function here, some students like to start at G and go negative. That means their A value will be negative, and that also is okay. But I like to start right here. Let's highlight this. I see a sine curve right here. It starts at the midline, goes up, comes down, comes back up. So I'm going to write the equation of that sine curve right there. So let's do it right here. Let's see what values we have. H of T, remember it's not X here, it's T equals. Well, what is the amplitude? The amplitude is 9. So we're going to start with 9 times the sine of, we need a value for b. Well, remember the period equals 2 pi over b. And they have to tell you the period in this question. They have to tell you the period. And they did tell you the period right here. The period is how long it takes the cycle to repeat itself. So you can pick a maximum to a maximum. You can pick this point G to, you can't use K, but you'd have to use this point over here, which we didn't really label, so I wouldn't use that. Uh, but I'm just gonna use the minimum to the minimum. How far is it from one half to five halves? Another way, if you wanna switch that to decimals, 
This is 0.5, right? And you can use decimals in your answers if you want to. And this is 2.5. So that distance right there is a distance of two. So that's what the period is. So when we go to find B, we have to use the period, which is a distance of two in our little equation here. So two equals two pi over B, because we know that the period equals two pi over B. So now what? I'll cross multiply. We get two B equals two pi. If I divide both sides by two, I get B equal pi. How about that? So back to my equation, the value of B is pi. Now we need a value of C. If you remember, the value of C is always opposite of you know what we're doing here. So C is where the, the curve starts. It's our horizontal translation. And so it was a zero and it has moved over to this point K, right? Because this is where it starts. So it's one. So remember, it's always the opposite. So we're gonna write minus one here. And then the midline is the part that's in the middle, right? So that would be plus nine. But the question just asks you to find the values. So do you have to write out the whole equation? No, you do not. I mean, technically you just have to do this. A equals nine and B equals pi and then C equals negative one. The way I've done it, it's negative one, and then D equals nine. But as I said, you might have a different set of points up here, that's okay. That means that these values will be different too, not a problem. All right, let's move on. We're gonna refer to the graph. It says the T coordinate of K is T1, and the T coordinate of P is T2. So we're looking at, essentially we're looking from K to P. All right, on the interval of T1 to T2, which is K to P, right? So let's just look at K to P, and we'll see what that looks like. K to P is this part of the graph right here. Okay, so look, what do we know about this part? We're positive, we're going uphill. Looks like it's concave down. What kind of questions can we answer? On the interval from T1 to T2, or K to P, which of the following is true? First of all, you can narrow it down, get rid of these. It's not negative, because none of this graph is negative, right? And we just have to figure out whether the function is increasing or decreasing. If we go from K to P, we're going uphill. That's increasing. Don't miss a question like this. You can mess up the whole other question. The whole the rest of this question you can mess up. But um, this is easy. Don't mess this part up. And then what do we got? Part two here. Describe how the rate of change, remember that slope, is changing on the interval from T1 to T2 or K to P. Well, I'm going to draw it down here so I can kind of look at it. So it looks like this from K to P kind of looks like this, right? So let's talk about the rate of change, which is the slope. So how's the slope changing? Well, let me draw the slope here at the beginning. Kind of looks like this, right? It's like this. And then it goes like this. And then it kind of levels off. And then it's almost like a zero, right? So the slope is positive and increasing and it goes to zero. Guess what that means? It's decreasing. And that's pretty much all we have to say right there. It is decreasing. We're describing how it's changing. Uh, if you want, you can say because the graph is concave down. I guess we could add that. Remember, concave down is like a frown, and con concave up is like a cup. Wow, I almost screwed that up, Mr. Keller. Remember, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Good luck out there, pre-cal kids.